So, we're back. Floor 43. I beat it last time through a ginormous amount of trial and error, affording the ginormous length of the Heavenly Tower video. And I was quite happy with that strategy. People didn't seem to be suggesting that what I was using was completely wrong, so the level kind of was as difficult as I'd found it. Just a couple of true forms or maybe one different unit here or there could be of benefit. But I thought, I got something that worked. You know what would be interesting would be to see how many attempts it would take to beat it again using the same strategy now that I know it can beat the level. Was this really a one-off thing or can I do it again and not power creep in order to beat it? So I set about doing that. Got myself slowly leaned into the hot bath of confusion that comes with going back to a difficult level like this. Slowly got the ropes, got my strategy broadly back to where it was before. Things kind of seemed immediately a lot easier, like it's looking all right, oh, this Zor isn't too difficult. And then I forgot that of course it's the combination of the Zor, the Mr. Mole, and then the Zhang Ru that causes so much trouble. So trouble I ran into and trouble we had many attempts were had, not many items were consumed, and in the end, it wasn't really too bad. I did start getting a little demoralised, but then one lovely run, it started to work out, and it worked out! And you know what? I was pretty happy with this figure of number of attempts to get it done. Make your guesses in your heads now, because I never really understand when people say, make your guesses in the comments section, because then you just have a comment section littered with random numbers and, I don't know, an edit of someone saying, oh, I was wrong. But do that if you'd like. Make your guesses. You should have had time to with my rambling. It was 15. 15 attempts it took to get it done, which is definitely, absolutely dootly, significantly fewer than the first time. So I was very happy with that. There's a big element of RNG in it, so I don't think it's going to go 14, 13, 12 every time I go back to the Heavenly Tower. It may be like the RNG for Treasure and Empire of Cats, and it'll just take millions of years to get Floor 43 done next time. But the fact is, I don't need my units to be any better to beat the level again. That strategy is enough, and that makes me very pleased indeed. And so I'm going to continue, I think, to do Floor 3 without upgrading those units any further. Floor 44, last time I left in just a wallow of confusion. How on earth am I going to get this level sorted out? We've got a clean out and a Hanya. What are we going to do? And so what I did was go back to it with what I had before. And unsurprisingly, it continued to not work. What really struck me strategically was the step change in thinking that was required. Well, I mean, obviously I required a step change in thinking, what I was doing wasn't working at all, but it was the nature of that step change. I could focus on ramen as the thing that embodies that change. It's resistant to angels, or not. I don't know if it's gone to the rover school of confusing me. Whatever. Very good meat shield against angels. And yet, it was not one that I should have been using. Really, all its resistance did was get a whole load of them clumped up in Clearnell's attack range, and then they just die. It wasn't actually really helping me stay where I was, even though a load of static ramens logically should help me to not have those enemies move forward. But in fact, what I needed to do was push and be fast. Speed over resistance was actually the path I needed to go down. As long as units had decent enough survivability, I was to find out that running into the gaps that form was the most important thing there to get the chip damage done, and not kind of brute forcing a way in by having units get through Cleonel's attack and all stay there in a clump next to the two enemies. That, it turned out, was an unreasonable expectation and one that was not going to get me to victory in the battle. So, a different way had to be found. The first strategic advancement that I made of sense was putting Metal Cat in, and oh, what a fantastic strategic element 
that ended up being. It turns out, with a very few actual attacks that Hanya and Kliwon do, Metal Cat fares fantastically well. I could almost kind of stack them, which helped me to maintain my position on the battlefield like I'd never been able to before. And then, the second sensible strategic bit of nous that I managed was putting Manic Lion in. I didn't realise how brilliantly useful it would be because I thought, such strong units, Manic Lion's just going to die. And it's going to be 750 monies that I can't really afford to waste, wasted. But no, Manic Lion had surprisingly fantastic survivability. Mine isn't ultra-maxed, it's level 40, it's just fairly normal, and yet it kept at that end of the battlefield, the vanguard of where I was going, and it gave me value for money, because it wasn't dying, and again, occasionally, I could stack them. And so with those two units, I had the formations of a sensible strategy. I guess goes to show that try things that you might not immediately think will work, and they might actually work really rather well. My next strategic advancement was realising that the normal cannon would be a useful one, both for delaying attacks and for knocking those two enemy units back when a gap is created in front of them so that they don't immediately move into it and I can maintain the same position. They had ginormous health, so it was definitely a chipping away kind of level, and eventually you'll get there. Em Emphasis on eventually. On the run where it started working out, I was very pleased indeed, but also very stiff in my fingers, palms very sweaty, staring intently at my screen for more than 20 solid minutes of hard fought battling back and forth. It never got too stressful, and in the end, I got into the groove of things, cannoning when I needed to, never really running into too much trouble with units, managing my monies far more effectively than I thought I'd be able to, and always having enough to keep something out that's helpful. Broke Cat being probably like the only element of my previous strategy that was working sensibly and using the combos in place to exercise more damage on those units so it wouldn't have to take as long. Occasionally also using Cyborg to deal with by far the most irritating part of that battle, as it turned out to be not the main enemies, but the black enemies that ran past them and just rained destruction down on me, often before my units could get off a valuable hit, thus knocking them back and creating even more space for Cleonel and Hanya to walk into. Luckily, there were enough times during the battle where getting the Jizu out, the Cyborg out, and the Meat Shields eventually got rid of those enemies, but it was, I think, mostly kind of mad Manic Lion and my surprisingly effective meat shields that stopped me from losing in those moments. It wasn't plain sailing, but it was sailing. I can't sail. I don't know what I've used that metaphor. But anyway, I managed to get through it, eventually kill one of the enemies, at which point with my stiff fingers and sweaty hands I said, yes, and managed to obviously then spam, kill the other enemy, and get through to have a win. Unfortunately, I wasn't in the position to record it with commentary, but that is the story of Floor 44. This time round, a very positive story. Time to hand over to my more live self to introduce to you Floor 45 and my various attempts, shall we say, at that. Floor 45, we are now-ish halfway up the very difficult last leg of the tower. And so, what I'm going to do is switch back to the most general of slots. We'll give it our first scouting go. Ooh, uh. Double row as well, everything's all changed and different. Oh, it's Queen B. I'm actually quite fond of Queen B. I'm actually quite not fond of Baku. And you can see, actually, the difference in how much I like them is borne out by their difference in resolution. Look how fuzzy and terrible Baku is. And look how crisp and sharp Queen Bee is. I also far, far more so enjoyed having a go at Queen Bee because I think it was something to do with managing to do it without a rich cat. And I was like, Elichi, wow, look what I've done. <laughs> 
Cyberpunk was not wise. I feared that that might be the case, but I wasn't absolutely sure of Baku's current status. With the freezing that's going on, I'm thinking a little eraser, some fast units. You know, I might actually be better off adapting the strategy that got Floor E4 done for me and moving from there, rather than what is kind of a slow lumbering stacking strategy. That evidently isn't gonna work, but we're not gonna let him win. Not technically, anyway. Now, I've gone with adapted faster strategy, gone through my filter for some immune to freeze top moments, kept me metal cap because I figured there's not actually going to be many hits done, but then again, that's probably because I was ignoring the existence of the little peons, which could actually cause a lot of problem. We'll arrive at those worries in a bit. A lot of these actually aren't resist freeze, so you know, I could reevaluate that. And I've also done a little bit of a risky do with D arced. We're going to see if he can get shots in. And I don't even know if Baku is, is normal type or not. By rights it, it, it should be, but that doesn't really tell us anything. Jump, my son. We did look like we got a damage knock back there, so that was good. Douche dealt with. Spamming of the little erasers. Now I should monitor them actually. Are they just getting killed? Go on Baku, sneeze on me. No, that's fine. We're okay there. They're doing well. I just think I need to put them out continuously. I say we're doing well. We're not really. They're on our base, causing us trouble. The Titans in the punch 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 combo aren't going to be of much help because they're just going to be stopped. There's a... Oh. God, there's another Baku. All right. Interesting. Intriguing. Perhaps not the most welcome. I've had an idea, you know. I always hark on about if it ain't broke. And this level is reminding me perhaps a little bit as I stare rather blankly at my army formation of floor 39. And we came up with something rather fantastic. Why not just try that again? Floor 39, give us your worst. That is actually floor 39. You see, what I think I've done is I've taken myself too literally. I'll be back in a bit. Another benefit you see of using my lucky ticket stage is to get an insane amount of items. It kind of future proofs against my idiocy. Anyway, floor 45. We're starting off with a Zamboni and a Maglev. Well timed by the CPU really, by all accounts, and a lovely sniper hit on Queen B already. A so much better start off. My mantra, really. Computer, we say yes to. I need a better mantra. Our Zamboni is working fantastically up at the front. Maglev got past one round of freezing, unfortunately not the other, so will not be of benefit there. But Queen Bee and Baku are not moving forward very quickly, which means that everything is really rather going okay. And it is kind of proving to us that sometimes the old ways are the best. Getting up a nice kind of clump here. Oh, I like it. Douche death. We're stacking up really nicely here. You know, like, the first run definitely suggested to me the stuff that doesn't resist freeze is going to be useless. But then actually, this floor 39 strategy, although very much kind of not resisting the freeze, there's kind of enough strength and tankiness in it to stall them. Or at least there was when there was one Baku. To make more references to other stages pertinent in my mind, I'm thinking floating continent into the future chapter three. When you got one knee, my ball, you can probably hang on. When you've got two, no. Now I think the boss health percentage, if there is one, is gonna be completely useless. So we must have done that all at the start, which is fairly decent, but also useless information to us again. We're chipping away at Queen Bee when we can, and the rest of it is just not getting killed. So what the boss HP is at is just kind of completely irrelevant. And losing so quickly, it, it never fails to demoralize, but this is still far better than previously. And I'm gonna continue going along in this spirit and also not have Water Blast on, because, well, I'm not sure what happened there. Into it we will go then with a modified strategy and a leadership used attack. Sister Act, unit attack up, which I'm gonna use Dark Tanyan along with to increase our damage against Baku killing it more easily if D'Arct is out. Only problem with that, of course, is that it's an expensive unit, so the CPU will often save up for it. Other changes I've made include Jelly Cat, because it was instrumental in Floor 43 success. Oh, Queen Bee slows, didn't realize that. And 
there is the chance it might well get a fancy wave off and there's plenty of chances at it because it's cheap and the recharge time is decent on it i've changed the meat shielding around a bit just to have our little eraser back because it resists the freeze and with the extra unit in there for dart we've had to lose one of the meat shields but cpu's not got enough money to put them all out anyway let's see if we can still build up clumps big enough and do loads of damage what did we just see there a beautiful jelly cat wave thank you jelly cat i wave back to you that was very nice but then you see we get problems like this without a really fast little meat shield with the exception of sumo he's a really fast <laughs> massive meat shield we are leaving gaps that are getting filled with enemies and that is an issue and a problem one that we don't seem to be able to overcome i again i'm gonna have absolutely no oh lovely thunderbolt absolutely no way of knowing how far down we've got on the bakus unless we've done damage knockbacks and they can be monitored but we're not going to get an exact figure all we're going to get is the defeat screen and i really wish there was a, a way to know how close we're getting to doing what we need to do here. It could really help with formulating the right strategy, but I guess that's all part of the unknown and the confusion that comes with it. Unfortunately, the confusion that comes with it is immense. What do I do, eh? What do I do? Right then, I'm going to take a quick induction day back into the school of, oh well, it doesn't really matter if we put stuff that isn't resistant to freeze in there, especially if Queen Bee is in fact slightly different, as we've now remembered it is. I'm just going for really quick meat shields here, so that if the CPU's putting out one of these three, Sumo, Mohawk, or Manic Lion, it's going to be enough to preserve our little bit of space, especially if our Zamboni has got in there and is doing its lovely resistance to everything and just not letting the enemies advance. Hopefully that will stop gaps being filled by enemies and everything will be fantastic. That is the aim, the dream, let's see if we can make it a reality. Come on my son, go on, lots of damage, lots of damage please, and CPU Putting out fast things, please. Just kind of, kind of leave it to the CPU's hands because I, I could interact with it. I don't need to leave it and have a cup of tea, but anything I do is, is probably just as good a guess as the CPU. So I might as well just leave it to do its thing. And oh, what a lovely action shot of Dr. Nyan there. It's been getting a fair bit of damage off. I think we've got a damage knockback on a Baku, and I think that might be another one. So that's really good. I definitely think the fast units thing is helping, but I also think that we are running out of money just when we really don't want to, which is when the second Baku turns up. And although that was a lovely thunderbolt and a lovely rescue manic lion there to keep the gap short, it's not going to be good enough. We are going to lose again and I have absolutely no idea at which point in the battle, favourable for us or otherwise. We're getting damage knockbacks. But now I don't even know whether that's to the initial Baku or the second one. So I have no idea at all what stage we're at, other than a stage where we lose. This could be a good idea for a strategy, or it could be a terrible one. Now there is always the avenue of trying it myself. I've assigned a normal cat cannon this time because although the thunderbolt was pretty nice, we can also delay an attack with normal cat cannon and then we might also be able to kill the peons with it. I have swapped in instead of the manic lion, a manic macho legs because I'm interested to see how extra waving might help with the peons and getting towards things, but maybe jelly cat fulfills that function and the manic lion would be better especially in a manual strategy. But we will find out, foreboding energy count. But anyway, it would just be interesting to see whether we can manage our monies decently enough to have a proper attempt without whacking items on. Let's fill up that gap, because we're struggling again. Maglev at the Squire Elm, a little bit more monies for us than otherwise, so that's nice. We'll get a Darked and meet you where I possibly can around it. Please don't get slowed. We'll get a Zamboni in, which I probably should have done earlier. Get a Maglev in there as well. Cannon them all back. I was kind of thinking under the Thunderbolt mentality. So I've got to get that switched over to the normal cannon. We've got attack up on the Darks and Yan, so hopefully it doesn't die before it can make use of that. I think, however, that might happen. He has moved a total of <laughs> one frame in that brief intermission. But there's a nice bit of damage. There's another nice bit of damage. Thank you, Maglev. Very nice. Oh, 
Dr. Nyan fighting valiantly there. That was lovely. Good job, chum. And we got a decent stat coming up. Lovely bit of waving. Jelly Cat being an MVP. Can get me working it up a little bit more. Knock them back. Let's try and preserve our gap. Maglev, Manic Moha. And now we're getting sneezed at in a kind of damaging way. Oh, Jelly Cat being fab. Not the killing knockback that we need, though. We need that to preserve ourselves. Again, floating continent style. We've got the monies for another Dark Tinyan. This is our final flourish. Let's spam everything and see if it makes a difference. <sighs> Lovely knockback there again. I reckon Jelly Cat is a keeper, but unfortunately, that, pff, that second Dark Tinyan is not. Oh, dear, oh, dear. That's brutal. And again, we have absolutely no idea if that went well. And the third Baku. Oh, this is a bit unpleasant, really. I'm going to try it manually with items this time to see if it gives us a markedly better run. That Maglev might be perfectly timed because that gives us the start off that we want, keeping Queen Bee and that away. I've got Manic Lion in this time so that I can perhaps judge it a little better than the CPU can and use it to its fullest extent. I wasn't really able to monitor that last battle whether the Manic Macho legs did well, but we'll see whether we get the same kind of waving genius as we did last time because I think that was the standout part of the battle. That worked really well. I should have probably gone for a green shell earlier because that can just stick around for ages over here to be honest and protect with a nice little wall that my cats can run up to. Dr. Nyan almost got a shot off and then was just completely derailed. So he's been very much delayed in doing the damage that he should really be doing, which is a shame. It could have very easily gone the other way, but we started getting damage knockbacks and hopefully that will herald something good. Oh, no, that, that really isn't good. Oh, Jelly Cat, nice. He is almost completely on Jelly Cat, really, doing these amazing things. I'll try and get Dark Tinyan in after a Baku sneeze, so it can at least get one shot off. Go on, Dark Tinyan. We need you clearing beyond these Dagshuns and that. We really need to be going for the units behind it, although, of course, I appreciate all the damage that you do. It's just, well, it's just not enough. So keep, keep going for it, my son. Oh! Wow. Killed off by a Dagshund. Well... That tells me for dismissing it. Whew. Chaos, really? Promising chaos, like it looks like it kind of is working, but then it's also not. So Maglev, immediately as I can afford it, works quite well. We can use this initial calm, not really calm, to upgrade the worker cat a tiny bit. Need to remember to put green shell in faster, but I reckon we're gonna be all right with the timing of it this time. It's got him pretty well there <laughs> and done a lovely little bounce on the Baku, thank you for that. Dot and Yan is probably the next oof <laughs> sensible thing to save for so that we can start getting the recharge time down on the next one so that hopefully the next one can be got before we're in the precarious position where it is unable to do anything on the base. Uh, let's knock all of them back. Probably not the best time to use the cannon. I still do, unfortunately, have that Thunderbolt mentality. And maybe I'll bring it back just to suit the way that my mind's working so that I'm more in sync. Come on, Dr. Nyan, action shots for later, right? You can do that for the poster for your movie or whatever, but right now, I need some damage from you, and that is all I need from you. No posing, please. Seafarer, Manic Lion, other meat shells, definitely green shell. Green shell whenever we can get a green shell. Jelly Cat wave nicely in there. The flipping Dr. Nyan doing the running man. Can we, can we have you doing some damage instead of just dancing, my friend? Please? No? Okay, he's on strike, and that's that's it, basically, really. Jelly Cat dies before it can do anything, and I also can't help but feel that a massive amount of this battle is dependent on how Jelly Cat does. Honestly. Green Shell now. And keep doing Manic Mohawk as a bare minimum as well. Having constant ones of those is surely gonna help us to keep our position better than not having them around. Oh dear. That maglev was more like a kind of British train, that indefinitely delayed. We have lost far more ground than usual before getting Dark to Nyan, and I spawned it straight into a freeze, which I could have done better with only one Baku around, admittedly. Cat Cannon them back, which actually has moved it backwards far enough to massively delay the attack, so that was a good thing. Dark to Nyan lies at the front of the battle, about to get bitten, which is not a good thing. A bit more damage, that's a better thing. Swings and roundabouts here, but whichever of those two is the bad thing, we're getting a lot more of them. 
Oh, good. Delaying of a Baku shot by the damage from Dr. Nyan. A beautiful wave. That was fantastic. More of that, please. Let's cannon you back. I did that too late. Dr. Nyan is dead. I am sad. Oh well. That was a good maglev hit. Got some more damage off on Baku. I'm feeling like the ways that we're dealing with Baku is getting better. I am doing better at it, just not well enough. And so, again, we're not going to kill either one of them. So we're not going to have enough monies to kickstart anything fancy. Definitely nowhere near enough for a Dark Tinyan. And so we're just going to kind of pale away into insignificance. Fall at the wayside. All of your metaphors for defeat. And again, no way of knowing how close we were. I think this is going to ultimately turn into a floor 43 kind of situation. We're just going to have to keep doing it again and again until the run gods sprint our way. Jellycat start off. That's unique, but perhaps allows us to get a little bit of extra money from those guys. Probably doesn't make a difference, let's be fair. There are two different distinct attacks, and that means that we could theoretically engage into some form of T-word antics. Well, one could if one knew how to do that sort of thing. Uh, but one does not, so we'll have to adapt uh, and try and stop losing so much ground. I think the way with getting Dr. Nyan immediately is the way that is better. You can see that we're being pushed back, trying to get other stuff out to do intermediate little bits of damage to Baku, etc. I think with the Dagsund and the Douche there, we're gonna need Dr. Nyan to clear them out before we can do any kind of big damage or get some useful hits off with other stuff That's something that we can perhaps nail down in our strategy is a thing that we do and the more I know about things that we do Maybe things will go well enough in a run with luck and etc for it to work out Green shell, more fast meat shielding. Now I remember from my little worker cat study that if you're saving up for something that's within the bounds of the first worker cat's capacity, you don't want to upgrade your worker cat. That's not going to help you get the thing faster. In fact, it will just slow you down. So one, two, three. Dr. Nyan out, Jelly out, and more meat shields out if we can. I guess we've got a massive load of space that the enemies are now crawling into, which makes me very sad indeed. But all I can do really is put a manic lion out and try and build up a clump that stops them moving any further. The best time to start would have been earlier, but the second best is now. Come on, Dr. Nyan, that also kind of signals to you that I need you to be doing some damage to things. Green shell. Uh, knock them back, stop moving forward. Oh, that worked very well. I don't know if that cat cannon just about got us into a, a damage knockback, but it moved back very far there. Come on, my son. Come on. Skip. No. Oh, I was ready for a skablam, and you just get skablammed instead. Stop doing that. Right. Let's try this again then. Same kind of strat at the start. I'm, I'm liking what we're doing at the start. It's fairly decent and sensible. <sighs> Dark Yan gets hit by Queen Bee. That's just a thing. Jelly Cat moves Baku away. That is much preferable to what we've seen before. The more I'm playing this, the more I'm thinking Jelly Cat holds the secret to success here. So we're just going to have to hope that it does its job right. I'm not sure whether we can get it to do that, but we'll have to uh, do enough runs to statistically eliminate the possibility. Or win, but probably the first one. Let's go. Let's keep trying and let's make something happen, which... Probably won't. Wait for the boss wave. Immediate maglev. And then, I remember this time, a green shell. And then beyond that, <laughs> CPU's first choice is Nanako. Fantastic. We're going to let the CPU make the decisions. I am tired of making decisions which land in defeat. Time to blame it on a computer instead. We're already getting a far better stack than I've got so far. Might, however, be due to our rich cat and sniper cat more than the CPU's action. But we'll still be thankful. We're doing decently. However, Dr. Nyan's just been given a double wallop, a triple wallop. And I assume the next wallop is going to kill him off completely. And already the second Baku. I guess I'm surprised by this probably because we're actually kind of up the correct end of the battle whereas usually we're down towards my base and so I guess it takes a bit longer to see the second Baku arrive. We're still not killing the first Baku and that's a stage I want to get to. Okay, 
we probably won't beat the level. Rah, rah, fair enough. I really, however, want to kill one of the Bakus just to get some kind of validation that what I'm doing is right. But it's not right, you all scream in unison. Okay, fine. But dreams are dreams, right? And I can still dream them. I've turned the CPU off briefly to get myself the monies for Darked, just for a final flourish, because we need it to kill something for fat monies and can't be doing normal spamming. That will just end in boring defeat. Let's end in interesting defeat instead. Come on, CPU. It's flush for monies at the moment. It's all fine. It's laughing. But now we're pushed back against the base of both the Baku hits and the Queen Bee hits, which, as established before, does not allow us any kind of leeway. And I do wonder whether I should go back to Thunderbolt Cannon, because the freezing might be completely necessary, and the brief little bit of knockback that we otherwise had wasn't enough. And that Dagson is actually lethal. I took quite a chunk of health off my base there. Maglev, Manic Mohawk. Zamboni. And we're just gonna spam Manic Mohawk and I'm gonna do this myself until we're flush with cash because Dark Yan needs to come first. And I guess we'll find out from that whether putting it out first is actually a good idea or whether it arriving in the clump a little bit later is better. We're gonna get our Dark out now before the Zamboni meets a terrible fate. We'll also get a Maglev in, timings of which are all fine and dandy. Very nice indeed. Our Dark got in, got a hit, almost got two hits before being frozen. Oh, but then gets knocked back. That's sad. Go on, get him. We got a hit. That's good. But then it gets frozen, and I fear Dr. Nyan's going to have to make his own chances. There was some damage there valiantly got before death. But death, it still is. <laughs> I'm making these kind of very meaningful statements, but death, alas, it still is. It is. All right, we're just dying. That's about it. That's kind of the contents of this video. Oh, well, you love it, don't you? Tell me you don't love it. No, 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 don't, don't just destroy everything. Give me a chance. Spoil sports, a lot of them. Right, okay. Darked out now. We'll put the CPU on, which immediately prioritizes spamming the cat combo. Of course it does. I want you to be my friend, CPU, but you're not working with me very well here. Crikey, or we do need the Manic Mohawks continuously out. Because you see how much damage these Dagsons are doing. It's actually excessive. It's not fair. As the wise scholar Horrid Henry once said. Time to accelerate! No, no, Dark Tinyan. He's getting what froze like. Nothing's having as much impact as I'd like it to. I don't actually think CPU is going to end up being the way to go here. But then again, that might just be because nothing I have here is powerful enough. Seafarer is great here and floor 39 because it has the chance of surviving a lethal strike. So I don't know whether having a Jiangxi would be useful, but probably not because I need speed in my meat shields and I don't exactly have the monies to be sustaining something like constant Jiangshis. We're always struggling for monies as it is. Dark Yan's about to come out of the old recharge time. I guess we'll wait for a freeze attack like that and then send Dark out. A little bit of timings there and then try and send in whatever we possibly can. Maybe, maybe Cheeky Jelly Cat. Maybe not Cheeky Jelly Cat according to Queen Bee. Alright, cheers. And we're back against the base again. And that's kind of where we get stuck. <laughs> where Dark Yang gets stuck in his very stylish action shot. And it's all over far too soon once again. 93%, although that's just completely meaningless because it's the Bakus we're fighting. That would be a useful feature. Knowing individual boss HPs remaining, you could argue and Ponos might argue that it, it shrouds part of the battle in mystery and increases the challenge, but it's also irritating. I passed Wind Dance of Valkyrie and didn't have a look in its stats, but I should have, because I had a suspicion that it might resist freeze, and it very much does, and that's exactly what I want. I'm going to remember this time also to change my cannon to Thunderbolt, thank you. Definitely not the CPU this time, because it will have no idea what it's doing, <laughs> much like me, but anyway. No need to spend an item to have no idea what we're doing. I guess we're going to send Wind Dance of Valkyrie in then. I don't know which one would be ideal first. Oh, look at that. Missing the Queen Bee shot and immune to the freeze. Would be better to have meat shields around it. <coughs> that was a very poor execution. And because it's no continues, well, that, that's basically it for us. Although, with saving up monies and being a little bit sensible with your cash, we are actually able 
to get another De Arct in. I used my Thunderbolt there to delay the moving forward that is extremely undesirable. Wind Dance of Valkyrie's competitive recharge time has allowed it to be spammed again, if only we had the monies for it, which I will now save for. Oh, look at that! A douche death has facilitated it! Fantastic! Uber's on rotation! Dagshun's dead! Why didn't I think of this before? This is so much better, look. We're actually doing things. Wind Arts of Valkyrie almost did so many more things than she had done. It was fantastic. It was great. But now I think we're going to have to wait. And the recharge times will probably bear out both of these units at the same time, unfortunately. And we're really getting pushed back. So for a, a, a brief moment, everything was beautiful. And then another tiny brief moment with Jellycat's attack, that was also beautiful. What, however, is not good, I guess, is this stage. And we're about to see whether Windance Valkyrie can make it any better. Well, with her immunity, she... I just shouldn't say things. I, I don't need to start sentences. There's no point doing it because everything I say just gets completely negated. Jellycat, free hit for you. Oh, oh, last, last flourish. Last flourish. No. Dags hunt again. Why? Get off. We've dipped below 200 rich cats for this run, and that makes me very sad. Hopefully it'll be worth it. We're gonna save up for Wind Dance of Valkyrie, but the difference will be this run, we get it in combination with lots of other units. That is the plan. Let's do Darked, because uh, it has a longer recharge time. I don't know, but then I don't know if, if, if that means that the decision I've just made is a bad one. I've spammed Nanako, very useful of me. What was that me saying, that I would be able to discern units better than the CPU would? I didn't say that, because it's not true. All right, a little bit of a freeze from the Thunderbolt. Not long enough to counter the freeze that's on my Darktonian, and so it dies a very cold and frozen death once again. Not, however, before a lovely hit. Thank you, Darktonian, that's a bit more like it. The Bakuza back as well, as in back further in the battle, not back in terms of back killing me, luckily, which has allowed a little bit more damage on these nasty, nasty peons, and we can now afford Wind Dance of Valkyrie, which we're going to get in for a brief, glorious moment of double uberage. Fantastic! Darktonian Yan died, but valiantly so, in the killing of the Dagshund, and, and Wind Dance of Valkyrie will just just died, generally. Let's freeze them, because they're filling up a gap that I really don't need them to fill, and a gap that I rather wish was not there. Dr. Nyan, uh, can you actually stop with, with your killing of things, please? Oh my god, stop! Get out of the way! Dark Tinyan has come off recharge time. There's a lovely little bit of jelly cat moment there. Dark Tinyan is, is not providing quite the moments that I want. Unfortunately, it seems Wind Dance of Alkyrie may not be the silver bullet that I wanted. She seems to have gone to the Nobeluga school of being immune to many things, but that not being massively helpful. And now we've got three Bakus. Floating continent moment, ladies and gentlemen. Not a single one of those sods is dead. And you know what? I was pretty happy with that run. I'm happy with how I did. And you know what? Contented. We've got further up the tower this time. We've beaten floor 44, which I'm very happy about. And I've got to a point on floor 45 where I think, as far as that strategy, which I'm reasonably happy with, it's developed decently and had a decent run. And, well, nothing's doing. N no material progress has actually been made. Oh, well. What I don't want you to do, please, is tell me how to beat it. Because this is an all by myself. And as previously, certainly, please, absolutely no talk of the floors afterwards. Otherwise, I won't be excited and intrigued by what's in them. And then I will be boring. You were very good about it on the previous video, so please keep that up. If there are better ways I could be doing floor 44 or floor 43, let me know because I've done them now and I'm open to suggestions. Perhaps ones that allow me to not upgrade anything. Not for floor 45 though, I've got to work that out for myself. And I intend to. But for now, I bid you goodbye and I hope you enjoyed.